Michael and maybe Shakur or whatever, or shit, who knows, man. He may even pass him. You know, he got a long help. You got, he, you got your I'll holler back at him. All right, champ. Appreciate you. Hello, hello. How are you, Eden? Doing well. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good, man. Happy to have you on the show and uh, see can we not get this this story out there, which uh, seems to be an interesting one. So uh, do we go with Eden Gordex or what are we doing? Uh, I'm just eating from Grodex. Uh, I just have to warn before any story goes out, no specific names just for legal reasons. I don't know. I'm kind of, I don't know what I'm going into exactly with what's being said or being told. All right. To. So let's start from the beginning. You, yes, sir. You were some form of fighter, correct? Yes. Yeah. I, uh, Amateur, I professional. It. What? What exactly? Just so we know how to categorize it. Yeah, I would say high level amateur. I was uh, pursuing Olympic qualification when I stopped competing. I seen that you sparred the the biggest names too. You know, um, some very very impressive names. Uh, feel free to let our audience know it's a very hardcore show, so they will be impressed. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to name drop too much. It's, it's all on YouTube. Um, but if I must, I mean, like, everybody in the top, in the 135, I feel like I sparred most of the top names in 135 that are in the pros right now. I did spar them, like, early on, I feel like, in their careers because back then I was, like, 16, 17 when I was sparring them, and they were about the same age, uh, except for Loma. Loma was a little uh, older. Yeah. So what what is your relations uh, to the company Gordex? Uh, I'm a co-founder. Uh, I founded the company with my father. Okay, so that's your dad. Um, yes, sir. It's so funny that, uh, you know, life is full circle because I've been seeing those bags in the gym for a while and they always oh. look higher end, higher, uh, I guess the best way to, is just more expensive. They look more expensive. Um, I would say the leather, you can tell right away from the leather and it, they always have like a ring on the top yes, to sir. hold the chains. It's a completely different design from any other heavy bags that I've seen. Um, I guess, are they more expensive than your traditional heavy bags because of how luxurious they look or exotic they look? Yeah, I mean, like, price point is not something that we were looking at in the beginning when making the punching bags. It's something that we circled around to later uh, in the process. But, like, we looked to bring the best possible equipment po to boxing because I feel like boxing lacks good equipment. And one niche that we saw that was lacking in boxing was the punching bags. So we went out, we worked with a leather manufacturer, a tannery in Italy that manufactures leather for like Hermes and Saint Laurent and Prada. And we, you know, chose to work with them. We had the option of like, working with um, a U.S. manufacturer and they brought us to their leather section. It's a 100,000 square foot leather, uh, leather manufacturer. And we chose this specific leather and we developed it for boxing so it would feel correct. You know, not too hard, not too soft for your punches to sit in the bags when you're punching them, not to rebound, you know. And the material is good if you're using a $500 pair of Grant gloves or winning gloves and you got leather and you're burning it on the PVC, the traditional bags, well, you're ruining those gloves. And plus, if you're a boxer and let's say you're in, your wrists and your hands are your money makers, it, it's good to punch a bag that will prolong those punching bags. And I, I wonder which gym you saw those in, but like a notable gym that we started working with um, from the beginning was Virgil Hunter. 
and Virg and I have a very close relationship. Um, I'm, I'm proud to say that he's a very good mentor in a lot of ways to me. Um, and I remember when I brought the first punching bag to him to show him, you know, um, he said, well, why should I pay this price point for a punching bag? He said, if it's so expensive, you know, I'm getting free stuff from every company, even the, even the ones with the highest ticket price. I told him, Verge, look, this is different. You know, I told him the story of how we started. I've told him the story of, you know, what it means to us to make each punching bag, what the Grodex names means for me and my family. And um, he believed in us. I told him, look, try it out for a month. You know, if you don't like it, we'll put it down. You'll put your other punching bags up. And after a month, he came back and he ordered three more punching bags. And I think one of the special things we've done for boxing, everything that we do is for boxing and for the sport is we created over 150 different versions of punching bags. And each punching bag is designed for you to perfect a certain technique, a certain punch, to work on different things. It's all for the enjoyment of the person and for the health of the person. And we're not really looking we don't do this for a high ticket item for a high oh it's expensive and they're trying to make money no you know a punching bag takes three people one uh, one week to complete full time from the cutting of the leather to stuffing the leather to sewing the everything you know and um i i think maybe they people overlook it and maybe that's because of a lack of communication um from my end so i'm really thankful for you allowing me to come on here and talk to you Appreciate that. Um, again, just because there's a price point, have you thought of, I guess, ways to get outside funding to get your bags that you believe can benefit fighters into less, you know, you know, boxing is a blue collar sport. Not everybody got. A lot of these gyms get their equipment donated from the Everlasts of the world and things like that. Um, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, if you've looked at a way to get your items in those gyms that may not be able to have world champions just yet, you know, that could just purchase the bag and let other guys work on it. I mean, our cheapest model starts at $125. Our most popular model is like around 160 So, I mean, those are attainable and those can be broken up through payments on the website to like four, four payments interest-free. And then we also started to release a synthetic uh, collection, which is the same as the leather punching bags with the ring, except they're made out of the PVC material. And those are the same price that are, is on the market, even cheaper on some models. So I'm definitely think about the boxing world and um, we're launching this year a boxing program, a boxing gym program. It's called Grodex Gyms, where we're going to release some of the most um, unique boxing equipment, I, I should say, for gyms that will help um, boxing gyms not only gain customers with the presence of the gym that they'll have, but also we have programs that will allow them to build like their own e-commerce store and um, sell our equipment for and get percentages from it and it's all online and you know use their gym and their beliefs and their mm, techniques to promote the equipment and um, the equipment that they purchase for the gym if we purchase if we do like a whole gym order they can break the payments into you know three-year term two-year term interest-free low monthly payments and that's because we believe in this equipment so much that Everyone that has committed and bought a gym from us has seen a positive return, has seen more clients. Either it's because they commit and they believe in themselves so much, or it's because the equipment also helps on the side of putting a presentable image for their gym and um, showing, um, allowing them to communicate their technique. I had a lot of coaches say like, look, ever since we got the gym full of the bags, People just come in here. We don't even have to say anything. They touch the bags. They go around. They have fun. They, okay, we want to sign up. You know, so there's there's two sides to it. We're not just a high ticket item. Everything we're doing is for the betterment of the sport. You have some of these bags in James Prince Gym, correct? In Houston. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I seen. Uh, I seen. Jar I actually recorded Jared uh, work in the heavy bag. 
um, in that gym. Oh, okay. Very nice. So the one I'm the one I'm super interested in uh, is the the I want to call it a body bag because it looks like a fucking human. Uh, and uh, mm. obviously you're 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 doing the Tank Davis uppercut on it, and um, okay, yeah, I really like that bag. What's something like this cost? So that's a Silhouette Pro. That one's super difficult to make. Like that feature right there, um, where the face pops out. Yeah, I think that goes for around sixteen hundred, sixteen something. That's a nice looking <laughs> bag, and uh, you know. If you've ever hit a bo- if you've ever hit a heavy bag, right? Like you always find yourself accidentally throwing uppercuts at a at a heavy bag, which isn't the right punch to throw at a heavy bag. So the fact that you have the face protruding, so you mm-hmm. can land an uppercut, is uh, you know pretty innovative. But uh, you guys have a you. lot of innovative things here. Things that we haven't seen before. Where do you get some of these ideas? Like, I'm assuming this is a target pad, but you've made it with, uh, I guess, is that metal so that the trainer can hold it and, um, you know, be more comfortable, which makes sense. You know, we have a target pad, but that that's a ring. That's for fitness. So you can have uh, both hands on the metal bar. You uh-huh. can spin like you're throwing hooks. Uh, I can't. I'm trying to mess So you can spin like this with it, like you're throwing okay. hooks. Two forward, spinning. There's like a lot of different variations you can do, and each of those is made to target a certain muscle group, like I was saying earlier. Yeah, I was doing some reading where you had another contraption that had the weight in the center and you were saying that it was yes. uh, made to focus on the core exactly that's the saturn ring the saturn Mike Basil ring, yes. loves to use that one he's telling me well you have another one in stock let me know i'll i'll get one you know he he really enjoys it for his uh, strength training so okay so that's the one i seen i seen it when um Benavidez and uh, Boo Boo were fighting. You guys did a post. I'm going to just screen share it. And uh, it's Boo Boo using the Saturn ring. So the center yeah. is weighted, right? And yes. uh, obviously someone in the comment section said, what's the difference between doing what he's doing with a weighted plate that you would find at the gym? So, yeah, what is some of the differences? Like, again, someone is seeing this. They think, yeah, I could just grab a 45-pound plate. Exactly. And the weight is all in the center. So what that means is, you know, it's a different proportion of weight where a plate, you have the weight all spread out throughout the plate. You know, it's not the same effect. And you really have to tighten your core whenever you're twisting with it. It's just those little adjustments that will make the difference between just using a plate and using a ball inside of the Saturn ring. Who would you say is your biggest client? Um, and I don't mean like consistent. I mean the highest level. Like is there a Floyd that's purchased a bag? Or would that be Shakur Stevenson uh, or a Devin Haney? Because I've seen, I know, well, actually, Devin must have been working on your bags at, that must have been um, Virgil's. Virgil's gym. Virgil's yeah, gym. Yeah, Devin also got some for his house. He's been a supporter. Um I would say Fanfara, Andreas Fanfara. Andreas Fanfara is your biggest client. He's been he's been one of the biggest supporters for sure. Wow. Yeah. Tell me how. He's, uh, what if, he he's opened a few gyms? What what is he doing after boxing? Yeah, he got a gym in Chicago. Okay. Um it's for for the youth and everything like that. I don't even know. He must have like at least twenty bags in there. Um Whoa. and just Couple speed bags, different different reflex bags. It's a serious gym. Um, yeah, he's been. He always, whenever we post something new or a new invention, he's. I gotta have that. You know, big supporter. Speaking of your I, re, uh, speaking of your speed bags, why did you decide to not just design speed bag, but you designed the entire contraption with the. Um, mounting bracket as well like you don't normally see that what was the thought process behind you know going entire speed bag 
with mounting bracket, backboard. I mean, it just it feels like a lot. Yeah. Um, Anthony Joshua got one of those. Caleb Plant got one of those. Um, from far, I, I can name a few names. But with, with that one, again, everything that we do is for, you know, the comfort of the person. So that one has a hydraulic press that you can pump up and down instead of twisting um, the like a lot of them you have to twist or you have to adjust and they're pretty complicated with this one you put in a rod you pump it and you can make the speed bag rise or fall as uh, to your preferred height and it's pretty effortless um, the other thing is if it's just a speed bag mount a lot of them shake this one doesn't shake and you know you get the proper rebound like you see Floyd Mayweather on um, on you know on the YouTube clip when he's punching speed bags you know he's an artist with that and that's something that we wanted to replicate with the speed bag and we went all in one we want someone when they purchase our product to purchase it and then they're happy with it they don't have to think about oh is it going to break is it going to work you know it's a one buy and you're happy with it um tell me it was difficult to convince ishmael Salas. man yeah no <laughs> Still difficult, you know, after he purchased from us three bags, he's, he's very difficult to, <laughs> to deal with. <laughs> so wait, the, difficult because he feels like he wants a, he deserves a discount for buying three or difficult because he just doesn't want to pay the price? What? How? And he doesn't want to wait for us to manufacture it. And that's oh. one of the biggest play, uh, Oh, wait uh, a minute. So you don't, you don't have these things on stock. These are made to order. Yeah, leather ones are made to order. Very oh. rarely will we have stock. What? What's the what's the what's the what's the delivery time or the the p p manufacturing time? Uh, week to two weeks, most cases. Oh, that's not bad. That's not bad. bad. Up to forty-five days if it's really like bad. Oh. Yeah. So it's you know winning so loves you got to wait six months. So is it a week? For. Is it a week to two weeks per bag? Or a week to two weeks per order? Depends on the order. Usually we try to do per order basis. We try to work as fast as possible because especially if it's a, a championship category trainer or a person getting ready for a fight, that's the priority and we try to get it to them as fast as possible. But, you know, if it's a 20 bag order, it's going to take us, you know, maybe three weeks maximum to manufacture no I hate stuff. to get so so personal, but what's the plan for scaling, right? Like, cause how many bags can you sell? Like Virgil, Virgil already bought, let's say, a gym worth, and the yeah. the leather is high end Italian leather, so it's not gonna yeah. break in three four years, right? Like, how no. do you make more money if if you eventually target all the gyms? Now everybody's got your bag. Now they got these expensive bags that don't break down. Wh where do you go? How do you make more? 100%. And uh, the punching bag is just something that, like Louis Vuitton has the suitcase, the travel bag. That's how they started, right? But then look at them right now. And you don't think with the innovation that we bring to the products that we've developed, just with punching bags, that's just us showing what we're capable of. I mean, I have catalogs and catalogs of products that I could just release, kind of like, you know, Drake has a bunch of unreleased songs. I can, I can just... Pump it out. I can drop out a collection of... I love it. I love it. That was a great <laughs> one line. Boxing gloves, whatever is needed. I can show you right... Like, you know, it's not... It's nothing. No, um, listen. So, I was super excited yeah. for this because I think that, you know, your family is very innovative. Uh, the products, it's like you said, they seem so fun. Like, I've never seen this next bag. I'm assuming it's an uppercut bag, but it looks so enormous that it's like, is this... For a coach that has young kids so they can all hit the uppercut at the <laughs> same time, what what was the design? I mean, what was the thought process behind designing this? And am I correct? Is this a giant uppercut bag? Uh, it's a horizontal bag, so you can wear your jab all across the bag. And you can go under it if you want to, like slips. Um, and then on the ends, you have the you can work uppercuts, hooks, um, all types of punches. And that one was, you know, when I was young and up and coming in boxing, my pops would always make me different types of equipment. 
and with that equipment um like i think on our TikTok, there's a video where we show the progression like i'm 13 14 15 he'd come into the boxing gym look what i'm working on and he'd come to his wood shop he's a he's a master craftsman um he'd make a bag and he'd bring it back and that was one of the original models he made and that one was just for parallel working the jab and going back and working one twos one two stepping over alongside the bag is unique and it's all made for the like think about it this way the products that we originally developed was a father making it out of the love that he had for his son and wanting his son to succeed now that comes full circle you know that i'm old enough to put out some of the ideas that he had uh, originally in his life out and and give him the credit deserved because he's tried to work with numerous different boxing brands and different brands in general that have told him like ah you know your idea is not good and then they release it a month or two later you know like this kind of stuff happens and um, so wait you guys are some... not you're not putting patents on these ideas or that does that not no, exist yeah. okay that's one of the things that we did was put patents uh, the, uh, the boxing bags are patented. It took some years to get it. Um, we do have patents, and you know, thank God that we do. For the U.S. Patent Office to recognize the patent takes a lot of work. <laughs> so, is your last name um, the same as the billionaire from the Zone? Is the uh, do you pronounce it the mm, same way? I don't know. I don't know the la the last name. What? How uh, do you pronounce your last name? No, my last name is Lesnick. But uh, Grodex comes from the last name Grodetsky, which is my great grandmother's last name. She comes from Polish, uh, like nobility. And um, during World War II, my great grandfather was in Ukraine. And she, you know, the Nazis captured Ukraine. And she had to work. She had, you know, the whole long story, like the whole family story is crazy. But eventually, she would steal the people's documents that were, let's say, Jewish. And she would hide the documents so the Nazis couldn't prove that they were Jewish. And they couldn't take them to concentration camps. And she did this with about 80 lives. So she's a very, her whole life she was like a very heroic woman. She, took, she was a single mother taking care of twins um, during the war and two young kids. And um, she made it through it with them, you know, under very harsh conditions. Um, no food and stuff like that. So she went through a lot. And um, my great grandfather had a leather factory and he had a lot of workers, but communism took all of that away. Um, but now, you know, generations down the line, we have the opportunity to do something with leather. We have to, and um, this was very personal to me when starting the brand. Um, and I wanted to name it something, you know, something that represents the family. And my dad initially wanted to name the company Vertex, which is like the pinnacle. And I said, no, there's too many Vertexes. So I combined Vertex and Krodetsky, and we got Grodex. So uh, another one that struck my eye, and I don't know, it, it, you know, obviously, I guess because I'm a superhero fan, right? So I was always into the arrow. This looks like uh -huh. a bow and arrow. But then I'm also more curious to know, does it actually work or is it going to fall over when you start hitting on it? Is that plate at the bottom weighted? Is the disc slotted so you can screw it to the ground? Um, talk to us about this one. Oh, shit. I'm showing my text instead of this. <laughs> now you see it, right? Yeah, that's a, that's a double M bag. That's the world's first portable double M bag. It comes with suction cups. Now, if you don't have suction cups, you oh. also... Uh, Sandbag for a hundred uh, with a hundred pounds. Now a hundred pounds is all you need to weigh down this bag, and it only it all it works. It it's in that position, and then it also goes horizontally. You can change the position if you'd like. I think I have videos of it of punching it, but I've been posted. I posted a lot, so it might be hard to find. So so I see that it's slotted at the bottom. Are those like uh, cross drills so you can screw into the ground, or no? No, those, the, um, those are for the suction cups and for screws to connect the actual metal frame to it. But if you wanted to, theoretically, you could drill the metal plate into the ground. Mm. Yeah, It'd that one was interesting. So, um, you don't, 
really have a rival, right? Because I don't know any other high-end bag. I mean, Winnie sells theirs for a lot, but I don't see too many people. I don't, I don't think their price point is justified. They don't even use leather. Um, but, kid, you know, a lot of these Wait, brands... Wait, winning, winning bags are not leather or are the gloves also no, not no, leather? No. The gloves are uh, pigskin. But the bags are, um, um, uh, I don't know how to say that, pleather. They're not leather. Yeah, okay. We all know pleather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, but I don't want to misspeak about anyone. But in terms of competitions, I don't think anyone's willing to put in the dedication that we have towards these bags. Um but in terms of competition, I have seen people, a lot of people trying to copy us, whether it's the logo. I had, I had some encounters with people wanting us to manufacture their bags and turning around and trying to manufacture it themselves. A famous UFC coach with his own glove brand. That's all as far as I'll say. Um, but, you know, the patent kind of stood its case there. Um, a couple boxing brands now are trying to copy the designs with the ring and things like that. Some are trying to copy the logo, how we have the G in the logo and like the logo placement. And even um, like our bags have a logo area where the logo area is a different color from the hitting section. A lot of that is going on and it's really annoying because the way they're presenting it is like they've invented it. And like that's really frustrating knowing the amount of work and the amount of uh, time that we've put into it. So when I came into the to this business, I wanted to bring a quality product into boxing because I saw no one was making quality products at the moment. But now I see that a lot of these companies are just copying one another. And they don't really have someone in the company that's been a boxer, been through it, um, sparred these top guys or been in the ring with these top guys and, and like knows what equipment is needed for the boxers. So, like, with the background that my family has, it feels really justified that we're able to bring something to the boxing world like this. Um, but, yeah, it's really annoying. It's really annoying. I wish, I wish I could say names exactly, but the way these, some of these cats act is, like, they uh, immediately they try to get you for defamation or something like that. And I'm the type to be like, look... If we got an argument, let's talk facts, let's speak the truth, and let's see, you know, who's telling the truth. And um, the other way, I always, you know, in the boxing ring. So if any of these, I guarantee you, not one boxing brand owner can whoop me in the boxing ring. I'll put it like that, for sure. Mm. <laughs> well, uh, I'm messy, man. So I feel like Box Roll is trying to come out with a brand new line that's very similar to yours. It's it's high end. It's sleek. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look identical to yours. So I can see where they may get offended if we try to say that they're copying. It doesn't have the ring, but I feel like it has that high end leather sleek look that you went for. But it is different but again the same you be the judge and let the audience be the judge but these are the bags that i'm talking about that i feel resemble yours slightly uh mm -hmm. more these kind that narrow at the bottom this one here you know resembles your ring bag without the ring at the top um well they do got a ring oh oh it's just not showing like if you go let, 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 if we break it down let's break it down let's get messy Okay. Uh, I've seen these. They've been brought up to me, and I think they look pretty identical. Um, mm. So that's just my opinion. But let's let's go by facts. Let, um, let's go go on their page and go on their punching bag section. Let's go. Let's go look at this. Let's see here. And you you can be the judge. I'm not. I'm not trying to make any. Statements I could just present what I'm seeing. Oh no no on their uh, stories you see how they have the highlights. Oh uh, on the story. Or maybe on, yeah. Oh or, okay right uh, here bags. Yeah. Mhm. Mm Let's see. Punching, Punching bag, bag redefined. Redefine. See six reinforced straps. Inserted steel. 
Oh, ring. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does say ring there. So, you know, it's impossible to make this design of punching bags without a ring because the ring keeps the straps parallel and the straps that the bags hang from. And that allows um, the stuffing from the bags does not, um, how do I say, it? it doesn't get misplaced because what happens is the straps at the top collide. I don't know if I, how do I show my thing. They collide mm -hmm. and the ring keeps them parallel. So that way the stuffing at the top doesn't get misplaced. Sometimes you'll see punching bags, all the stuffing at the top um, is gone. It's at the bottom. The bottom of the bag is fat and the top of the bag is empty. Mm -hmm. so the ring allows and you always find fight the fighters people. hitting the top anyway because there's less stuffing. <laughs> Usually the stuffing, we took apart like 20 or 30 bags. We found... Um, needles, we found sabits, we found rocks, we found a whole bunch of stuff. You know, I call some of these punching bags trash bags. That's literally what they have inside is a bunch of trash, you know, and fighters are risking their whole, you know, life in the ring to be punching this kind of stuff. It's, I think it's a little disrespectful to the sport. So what's used to stuff it? I mean, I'm so old that they, I used to have uh, punching bags filled with sand. What, what's being used now? So sand, the the problem with sand is um, with sweat and mixes, it becomes like concrete. It's too tough, you know, and, and you're going to damage your hands. Now I see people trying to use foam. Foam is also not good because your punch rebounds from the foam. You need to use uh, like mix of cotton, um, mix of like, uh, you know, like cotton fibers. And that, that's the best kind of stuffing that you can do. Now, how you stuff it and do this is different, different techniques. But um, yeah, overall, I would recommend cotton fiber fabrics. Wow. So sand is obsolete these days, huh? I would say so, yeah. Man. And uh, is it just because it gets wet? Because, I mean, wouldn't that just be putting it in some sort of protective moisture layer? Uh, no, the sand is very hard. If you have a 300-pound bag filled with sand, it's very, very hard bag, especially yeah, sure. the bottom. The bottom always is harder. You're right. It feels like concrete towards the bottom. Um, yeah. yeah, man. So, again, I don't think you've answered that part of uh, the plans for scaling because, you know, it seems like eventually you'll get to all the high-name gyms. So what's the plans for scaling for the company? I, well, you said other products, right? Outside of the bags, it would just be your other innovative products? Correct, yeah. Other products and different programs. We have a foundation coming. A whole, a whole bunch of things. I just don't want to be that guy that says, oh, we're doing this and doing that. I like to have the results speak for them. So, you know, follow us, subscribe to us, see what's next. Um, this year, I want to complete um, a lot of the stuff that we have ready for boxing and uh, start to also turn to the next chapter, um, which is a lot of, you know, innovative stuff that is around different things like uh, outdoors, fitness, uh, just a whole a plethora of things. <laughs> so uh, since you talked about others copying, what would you say is the difference between your reflex bag and Ryan's dad's reflex bag? And wouldn't yours be inspired by his? Or am I misinformed that Ryan and his father are not the first with a reflex bag and it's just they're the most popular with a reflex bag? I think, okay, a little bit of a loaded question, but I'm going to break it down. Um... With the reflex bag, I think reflex bags have been around for a long time, like 80s, 70s, like they've been around for a long time. I do think that Ryan and his dad did a great job of bringing them to popularity. Um, with that being said, during the pandemic, when everyone's sitting at home and everyone wants something to do, the reflex bags were in great demand. Uh, at the same time, Brian's blowing up on social media and everyone loves his uh, Cobra bag videos. I do think that hype has died down a little bit. But during that time, I had 
Grodex was blowing up, and we were blowing up mainly for our mm, leather punching bags. And I told my dad, I'm like, look, we got to create a product that's affordable for everybody. Not everyone can afford our product. We have the following, we have the people, but we need a product that everyone likes. At that time, we started working on a reflex bag, and that was the one you just showed, the Mamba bag. That one's totally unique. No one else in the world manufactures this um, reflex bag. That is uh, solely invented by Grodex. It has never been invented in the whole history of the world, um, which is, I think, pretty unique. So we're coming now we're coming into the reflex bag world and of course you got to do your research and i get a lot of messages people saying look you know we've been asking for this cobra bag from uh, ryan garcia and his dad can you make one can you help us out we want we want one they keep saying we're going to release one but they never release one and i said okay you know the, the people want it i must give to the people what they want so I started to manufacture one. In two months, it was, they, they were teasing the people for two years. In two months, we come out with a reflex bag. And I used the pre-order strategy to release it. You know, if you believe with us, you can, uh, you can purchase one. And people loved it. And as soon as I released a pre-sale, Ryan's dad releases his on pre-sale. Uh, maybe like two weeks or three weeks later. So I, I would like to think that we inspired them to release the reflux bag. And even like on the Thanksgiving, I, like after he, he was commenting some nasty stuff on our posts and things like that. And like saying our reflux bag looks a certain type of way and that the spring performs a certain type of way. But you know, now their spring looks a lot like our spring and performs a lot like our spring. So I have no ill will towards them. I think I would rather like to work together than create enemies. A lot of these boxing brands need to understand there's a lot of divide in boxing. That, what, that is what stops boxing. Um, fighters getting the fights made, promoters getting in the way, managers getting in the way. You guys, we need to work together. You know, that's what boxing needs. They need, these brands can work together. One person can manufacture the gloves, the other the bags, the other this. There's no need to create um conflict but a lot of these people's egos and a lot of these people's um i would say greed also gets in the way and that's what creates conflicts but in the end i think the truth always wins and the one thing that grodex is is the truth so i'm not scared to be in conflict with anyone because you cannot even sue anyone for defamation if they're saying the truth and that's what that's all i hope to bring to this platform you know for sure truth. Yeah. Well, Eden, man, we thank you for coming on. Um, yes, sir. Uh, can the fight fans look forward to any uh, sales or discounts or anything that uh, – is there an email list that they could sign up to to stay up to date on the newest and latest products? Um, how do you want to direct the audience? Yes, sir. The best way to keep an update is to give us a follow on Grodex. Uh, Instagram page at Grodex. Uh, I believe – I don't want to speak, I don't want to jinx anything, but in the coming month or two months, I'm going to release our boxing collection. And if you look at our reflex collection, we started off with the Mamba bag, then we did the Cobra bag, the Air Mamba bag, the Wall Cobra bag, the Double M bag. So, you know, five or six different reflex bags. Um, now it's time for boxing gloves. That's going to be the next collection released. Uh, definitely tune in for that. Check that out. And then for our gyms. We also have uh, um, a big collection coming out in the coming months. So uh, I got to ask, um, is this you? Because it certainly looks like you, but your hair is different in the video, so I can't really tell. Then I know that you spar high level, and the punch that your stunt double threw in the, re in the gender reveal. Oh, yeah, that's not me. <laughs> oh, that's not you? Yeah, I was man. gonna, I was gonna say, damn, how you spawn Shakur? And you throwing a right hand like that, but I want to be wait, disrespectful. Wait, 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 which video? I might be me. No, so you not spawn Shakur in the video, but oh, let okay. me just show you. Is this you? Yes or no? Yeah, that's me, Bruh, Why you throwing that right hand like that? Your foot came off the floor. Are you were you about to hit the 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 weights at the bottom or what? 
But this was an man, amazing I idea, to, I man. To make the biggest effect with the with the. <laughs> I, you know what it was? I was nervous that the dust would not explode, and I was just trying to hit it as much as I could hit it. I'm over there gripping my right hand, trying to stuff it as much as I can in the glove. But look, the explosion. That's what we're on, you know. Yo, so I know that you're supposed to be happy with whatever you get, but. You wanted a boy, right? I mean, you you the boxer. <laughs> I was definitely team boy, but you know what? I'm I'm very blessed with what God gave me. So nah, for not, sure. You know, come on, I got a very special girl coming. So. Nah, I mean, for sure, you, man. God. But uh, congratulations to you and your wife. And uh, look, man, we wish you the best of success with your company. And uh, the yeah. platform is here whenever you need to come back on. Uh, if you got any new ideas, new bag releases, anything you want to, um, you know, get the word out with the audience. We appreciate you. You didn't, you didn't check out any of my sparrings on YouTube? Uh, no, 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 I didn't. Man, no, I didn't. You should have. You should you check some of those out. Send me Maybe a link, man. Those. Send me a link to the one that you think is the best. Because, well, again, I know that you sparred cool. a lot of, I know those you sparred a lot of people. Because <laughs> I, I, I heard you sparred Devin, right? And Shakur. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Those might be worth checking out, but I'll send you a link. All right. All right. All right. right. Thank you for having me on. No, thank you. Bye-bye. All right. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Eden from Gordex. Uh, or is it Grodex? Grodex, maybe. Um, YouTube really family, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Help us get to that million subscribers. We're on the road to a million. And obviously, we have other great content on our Patreon channel. So since this video is over, head on over to our Patreon and check out all the exclusive content or right here on our YouTube members.